10,000 feet up, surrounded by stunning beauty, we stand in one of the most restricted places on Earth. This is Tibet, a region the Chinese government rarely allows foreign journalists to see. For CNN, it's been 10 years since our last visit. Back then, tourists were just trickling in. Today, the floodgates are opening. This year, some 24 million tourists will come to the Tibetan Autonomous Region, though some question if the number can really be that high. By 2020, authorities expect upwards of 35 million, including foreigners who still need a special entry permit. They'll stay in the dozens of hotels like this one, five stars, international brands. Not long ago, though, most Western companies shunned this place. After a failed revolt against Chinese rule in 1959, the 14th Dalai Lama, Tibet's spiritual leader, fled overseas. Dead leaders. And has been speaking out against what he calls Should Beijing's follow. religious and cultural Things suppression ever advice. since. But controversy aside, companies are lining up to come here as China's economic appeal keeps growing. We were invited here to cover an international tourism expo in Lhasa, the Tibetan capital. It was a government-organized trip where minders followed us everywhere we went determined to show a peaceful and happy Tibet. Things like painting, dancing, and opera. And then there was construction, so much construction. There are infrastructure needs that are being gradually constructed and improved, says Wang Songping, a tourism official. We are building a world-class tourist destination. Rome was not built within a day. Since leaving Lhasa, we've been traveling on dirt roads like these for hours, for miles. But eventually, that will change because of giant construction projects like that one right there. Eventually, that will become a modern highway stretching for hundreds of miles. And you can only imagine how much this remote part of Tibet, some 14,000 feet up, will change once it's finished. This woman lives at the end of that new highway. She was the only Tibetan we were allowed to speak with, handpicked by Chinese officials. She got subsidies to turn her home into an inn for tourists. There's even a picture of Chinese President Xi Jinping on her wall. Despite being surrounded by Chinese officials, she only offers an uneasy smile and says she's not sure. Critics say locals are being marginalized as the Chinese make money hand over fist using Tibetan culture as a selling point. This brand new village with faux Tibetan elements will open in a few weeks, ready for business. In order to build this village, the government had to forcibly remove many Tibetan families who were living and working here. Chinese officials tell us that those families will now be allowed to move back in and perhaps reopen some businesses. But these ground floor buildings are big, the spaces are large, rent might be high, and these families are poor. We asked what kind of businesses those people could reopen, and the government said perhaps they could sell biscuits and tea. Perhaps questions like these are why the government won't let us roam freely here. But to any criticism, Chinese officials argue all these changes have actually been good for the Tibetan people. Household incomes are way up, and so are education levels. More tourists mean more paved roads, cell towers, and good internet. But at what cost? The answer from many, both inside and outside Tibet, appears to be one the Chinese government doesn't want to hear. Matt Rivers, CNN, Tibet.